already. Okay, so I'll have to accept it. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. I'm going to mute myself now because I'm fighting my little dog who wants to keep chatting at me. <laughs> Hi, Shodi. <clears throat> okay, I'll start the meeting at uh, 12.05. Two more minutes to let people join in. Lois, you made it back. <laughs> I know you were on super early. <laughs> <coughs> uh, look at that background show, man. Which one? Shodi's background? Shodi's, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> the Gabriel Mountains, yeah. Beautiful. Did anybody go snowing during this, after the rains? It's snowing. Anybody go skiing? That was the word I wanted to make. <laughs> Did anybody go skiing? <laughs> I went in the snow, but when I was in France, I visited France. One of my daughter lives near the Mont Blanc, so we went in the snow. I didn't ski, but it was beautiful. Wow, I'll bet. I'll bet. How long were you over there, JP? Uh, three weeks. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was really... Uh, a wonderful time but you know traveling is not easy all the tests you have to go through and the the urgency of those tests you know going back to the u.s it gives you only 24 hours to get tested and if you don't have it with the right date they want that you board the plane yeah so it was a challenge but apart from that the, the trip of course was wonderful right Okay, I think it's uh, time, 12.05, so I'm going to start the meeting. <laughs> I call the January 13, 2020 second meeting of the Rotary Club of San Marino to order. This month is uh, a month where we had joined on Zoom, unfortunately, given the situation, but that's the, you know, the reasonable thing to do. Um, just a real reminder for everybody, the meeting starts at 12, but we opened the Zoom a little earlier. So 11.30 was okay. announced. It's because we need to sync up and uh, coordinate between the different actors on the Zoom. So, uh, but if you, if you want to join at 12 noon, it's fine too. Yes. So that's, uh, that's the plan. If you have any questions about the Zoom and how to operate the Zoom, you know, we'll be happy to uh, chat about that. But uh, it looks like it worked for all of you. So crossing my finger, let's uh, keep going on. Please stand and join me in reciting the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do in Rotary. I'm going to share this. You all have to unmute yourself now. <laughs> right. So the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do first. This is the truth. truth. Second. This is the third. 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 Uh, now, um, we are going to please stay, uh, keep standing for the Pledge of Allegiance uh, and inspirational uh, words from Gilda. Oh my goodness, oh, Mike, you texted me and you said I'm doing it. And, and yes. can I defer to Mike? I that, sure, sure. You Mike, would you, would you do the honor? I did not put it together. Mike Dreeby. <clears throat> why, why don't we just do it? I, I pledge allegiance. All right. Yeah. yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States, States of America, America. And, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Does anybody want to offer invocation? 
Yeah, I can go ahead and uh, do the, some invocation. Um, God, we are again in a situation where uh, we have to limit our activities, stop meeting with uh, our friends and families and stop traveling. So please give us the patience to go through that period. Give us the will and the wisdom to help those in need. There are people in need in hospitals, people in need in families, and uh, it, it's a difficult time, but we believe that with your help, we'll go through that. Uh, hopefully the next month will look better and we'll be looking forward to a better beginning of the year. Amen. 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 Okay, so at this point, um, we would like an introduction of guests, but we already started that. We are welcoming, uh, Gilda, do you want to uh, welcome our friends from the city? Yes. If you want to unshare your screen. Yes. Please, thank there you. Okay, I thank you for taking care of the invocation, JP. Um, so I wanna thank all of our guests that are here today and I will start with Molly. Molly, if you could introduce your guest, please. Thank you, Hilda. <clears throat> My guest today is Carly Portis. Carly is, comes to us from the Virtual Service Center where they focus on um, virtual receptionists and assistants. So we're glad to have you with us today, Carly. Welcome, Thank Carly. you for having me. Thank you. Okay. And then, uh, Dr. Marcella, if you want to introduce uh, your fellow city uh, officials and, and guests to, here today. I'd be delighted. We are happy to be here to support our new mayor and hear the state of the city and answer any questions that she wants to kick over to us. Uh, so uh, to that end, uh, as you know, I'm your city manager. Um, we have our finance director, Paul Chung, here. We have our interim community development director, Alex Hamilton here. We have our community engagement manager, Nicole Quadris here. We have our community services director, Kathy Johnson here. And we have our two chiefs here, uh, Chief Rueda from the fire department and Chief Encontro from the police department. And- Someone just joined, Michael right, just joined. Is, and there is our Parks and Public Works Director, Mr. Michael Throne. So we are all here, happy to be here. And um, I'm very excited to be introducing them to you as my guest since I'm now a Rotarian. All right, wonderful. Pleasure to have all of you here, thank you. Okay, and I do see uh, James Okazaki is here with us. Uh, James is- Linda's husband, Linda. Well, Wall. actually, it's just me. I forgot to change the name. Oh, okay. <laughs> <There's anyone. laughs> All right. Thank you, Linda. Okay. We'll be thinking about your husband. <laughs> um, okay. I, I don't think I missed anybody else. I think that's it. Very All good. All right. Thank you, Gilda. Thank you, Molly. And uh, thank you, Marcella. So uh, at this time, when we are meeting together, I'm passing the polio pig, which gives us the opportunity to give a little money to support the polio program in the world. We won't do that today, but uh, keep this polio pig in mind because when we get back together, we will see it again. Now we have a number of announcements before we start the program for today. Uh, first of all, I would like, I'm very happy to have a special announcement which I'm going to share here. So let me share again. Okay. So this is a resolution we'd like to pass today. It's about uh, uh, Mike Dreeby, our own Mike Dreeby, mm -hmm. to be district governor nominee designate for the year 2024-2025. This resolution summarizes the uh, what Mike's achievements are, which we all know Mike is a member in good standing. He has served the club as president for a few <clears throat> years, 2015. He demonstrates willingness, commitment, and ability to fulfill the duties of a governor and uh, has outstanding knowledge of the qualification, duties, and responsibilities as prescribed in those bylaws. 
So we are submitting to our high a statement that uh, uh, Mike would be the ideal candidate to be uh, our district governor nominee designate for 2024-25. Do you need a motion? I would move that. I would second it. Okay, we have second. Thank you very much. Now, do we do we do we have any time for debate? Just, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Talk me out of this, would you, Chris? <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I will simply go to ask you all in favor. Say aye. 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 Anyone aye. oppose? Then the motion is passed. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. We wish you all success in your new endeavor. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Je vous en prie. <laughs> I, I am grateful for your support and, and I hope I, I prove worthy of your confidence. Thank you all very much. Thank you. All right, we have a second announcement, which is about the, oh, I need to share screen again. Uh, we are going to talk about the Moto Classic and I'm going to let uh, Stephanie to take it on. Thank you, uh, Jean-Pierre. Uh, we just wanted to let you know that um, uh, Aaron Weiss is already hard at work and, and the board of uh, the Motor Classic to prepare for the, the next show, which is going to be um, in August again uh, this year. So it's going to be uh, the weekend of August uh, 27, 28, the show being on Sunday the 28th. Um, this is our new uh, poster for the year. So uh, we're looking forward to the show. And I know that all of the people in Rotary are, are um, anxious to help us uh, have a successful show and, and uh, make a, a contribution to the Rotary Club as well. So um, that's the announcement. Dennis, do you want to say a little something? Well, I think you have said it very well. We, we're, we're off to a start. Um, we have a long way to go uh, to August for this. And uh, we hope, of course, the COVID situation allows everything to go forward. But uh, we've gotten some 30, 38,000, I think, in uh, sponsorships already. And uh, <clears throat> but we have a long way to go. We haven't spent any money yet. But uh, we're having a meeting uh, next. Is it next week, uh, Stephanie? Yes. Uh, a board meeting and committee meetings and so it's off to a start and uh, we hope it's uh, as financially successful and uh, as it has been in the past years and likewise we hope it's as fun and great for the community as it has been in the past years and and since also since the city uh, the mayor and the city staff are are here on our meeting we would like to to thank them for all their help um we've uh, they've given us approval actually to hold the show for the next four years, which is uh, uh, a relief to, to us. And uh, they've they're always very cooperative and helpful with all of the logistics that um, we have to do for the show. So thank you all to the city staff for your help. And uh, we're looking forward to working with you as well this, uh, this next year. Yeah, so the date will be August 28th which is uh, basically in the middle of August. So we, we seem, Stefan, to be sticking to the same schedule every year mm -hmm. now in August, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's <clears throat> the week after the Pebble Beach, uh, which uh, works out uh, uh, good timing for some of the uh, exhibitors. Right. Okay, so uh, let me stop here and then uh, I think we have an announcement. Jesse Hong, are you with us? Yes, Jeff Young here. Okay, Jesse, tell us more about the San Marino uh, user, um, school district mini grants. <laughs> sure, thanks JP. So I think most of you are probably familiar with the mini grant that we donate to all the surrounding schools, including San Marino School District and the three private schools here in San Marino. Uh, last year, and so the funds came from an endowment that was set up uh, many years ago. And last year, we had actually available to us $35,000 for donation. That was for the year of 2020 to school year 2020 to 2021. This year, because of the 
fantastic job that the stock market has done. We actually had about $60,000 to distribute to the seven schools. And through our fantastic treasure, uh, Dennis, Dennis Nia, who put together the checks and we received uh, the enrollment uh, counts and also reports from the school districts, we were able to distribute our first check to the San Marino School District in the amount of, Dennis, if you can remind me, I think 42,000 was it? And, and then there's the rest will be distributed amongst the three schools, the three private schools here in San Marino. Yeah, and we're ready to do, we, we have the, the other three checks ready to go yeah. and we'll work mm -hmm. with John and Jesse on uh, getting those distributed. And uh, I'd like to repeat that uh, it's up to the principals working with the teachers on selecting how these awards are going to get distributed to individual teachers who will then uh, spend the money to make their classroom and their educational experiences better. And I also want to emphasize that we are telling them all that we need to have a report about how the, these monies were spent by teacher. And we'll get that sort of, you know, after the school year is over and uh, we'll be off. This is, turns out to be a pretty efficient way of doing it and schools are happy with it. So John, you've done a good job of leading uh, this, uh, uh, this whole program. Yeah, $60,000, we're happy to do that. We'll have to see what we have available for next year. Uh, by the way, on behalf of San Marino Unified School District, I appreciate our uh, lottery uh, member uh, for the, your contribution to the school district. Thank you. All right. So let's continue to make a difference for our community. And uh, I think now I would like to hand over to uh, uh, JP. Could yes. I make one, one more quick announcement? Please do. Um, uh, we're in the in January, of course, and uh, our third quarter uh, of Rotary year starts January. Started uh, January first. Um, but what I wanted, and and we'll get the, the paper bills out and the credit card announcements and all that sort of thing. But I did want what I want to let you know here is normally uh, uh, we've had two things happen. One, we've had to cancel uh, in-person meetings for January. We'll have to see about February. But right now we know they're canceled for January. Second, we got our billing from the district. And usually on a semi-annual basis, they charge us $29. This, but because of this COVID thing, they are billing us only $9.25 uh, per, per member. So uh, to pass that situation on, instead of billing uh, our members $120 for the quarter, we're reducing it down to $100. So passing that uh, $20 savings on to our members. And then the meals, because we're not doing it in, uh, in uh, January, instead of charging 115, we'll reduce it to $85. So it's a $50 uh, reduction in the quarterly bills. I should remind you, however, that we're doing our second half of our uh, sustaining membership thing. So that's a $50 charge. You had that last quarter, you have it again this quarter, and then going forward, we, we don't have that anymore. So uh, I guess my point is, is that I want you to know that the, the dues, the billings uh, are being reduced and we're trying to be as fair as we can. So uh, kind of expect that when you get your quarterly bills. Thank you. Thank you, Denise, for this uh, details. Good news. Um, now I'd like to um, hand over to Gilda. You have an announcement about uh, uh, forthcoming uh, activities. Thank you, JP. Uh, so a couple of things. First of all, uh, with the city here today with us, I want to thank the city for helping us with the takedown of the little Christmas house. Uh, I wasn't able to be there on January 8th, but I heard uh, John Encontro and our mayor, Susan Jakubowski, I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, were there. So I wanna thank you for all of your efforts. Um, uh, there were other members from the city that were there. Um, the, the entire uh, Rotary doesn't know all the details behind the little Christmas house. We're gonna put something together, uh, but 
Uh, I also want to thank uh, Dennis, uh, Joseph Chang, uh, Peter Corzo, and, and Tony Galaviz. Uh, some of those people are not here today, but um, we put it up uh, in December and we took it down at January 8th. And um, the Christmas house is getting stored uh, with the city at Lacey Park. So I just want to thank the city for coming through on that project and really helping and understanding uh, the history behind that project and keeping it alive in our community. So big round of applause for the city. Um, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's always good to do a round of applause on a Zoom. It gets, gets, gets the, the juices flowing. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to bring up is the off-site events that, how many of you opened my email during the holiday talking about the end of January? Okay, a few, a few, all right. And the February event. So, so we had planned uh, an off-site event on January 27th and you didn't get much information because it was put together a few weeks ago. Anyway, that was supposed to be at the Blossom Market Hall in San Gabriel. We have postponed that. We don't have a date yet because it just depends on what's happening with our community right now with the surge. So uh, just wait to be informed on that. The event that we were planning for February 24th, it was going to be held at Fong's office in Duarte. And that was going to be our first uh, business networking event. So it would be Rotarians coming together oh. and our members sponsoring, co-sponsoring that event. And um, it, was, it was to collaborate with our vocational services committee and giving our members the opportunity to share their businesses. So we may postpone that to March and do something else in February. So um, just stay tuned. It will just depend on this surge. And we hope that like Mike said, it will peak and it will drop and, and we can get back together in person. And I, and I hope that we can have your support and you will come out and, and be with us in person uh, supporting these events. So thank you, JP. <clears throat> thank you, and thank you, Gilda. So uh, just to sum up, for the rest of January, we will be on Zoom. So next week, uh, Zoom meeting, just like we have today. The next one at the end of January 27th, uh, the program is not known yet. It needs to be confirmed. We'll be communicate what will happen on that date, but it will whatever happens, it will be on Zoom. And uh, finally, uh, for February, we'll need to make a decision about February, depending on the outcome of uh, in the, the community around here about COVID. So we'll keep you informed as well. Either we start again being uh, in person in February or we continue on Zoom. So uh, wait and see, we'll communicate. Okay, I think we are uh, okay now. Um, any other communication or information to be shared? <coughs> That's all I had. Okay, now we are ready to start our program. And uh, I'm very happy to be introducing our speaker for today. Uh, our mayor, Susan Jakukopsi, is really well known. She's been uh, a mayor since December, if I uh, uh, look at uh, uh, the exact date. Uh, but Susan has been elected to the city council a long time ago in uh, 2017. So she has a great experience of uh, the city and we are really happy to hear her about uh, the status for this year. Uh, in the past four years on the panel, she has remained uh, she has been the contact, uh, the city's liaison to the San Gabriel Valley Council for our government and uh, also a member of the Capital Project and Construction Committee. Uh, she has represented the city on the Los Angeles County Sanitation District, which was uh, absolutely critical in those COVID times and was the uh, liaison to the city planning, the city's planning commission, library board of trustees, Chamber of Commerce and Design Review Committee. So with that uh, old experience uh, that she's going to be able to share with us uh, all that reality, what is going to happen for the city for 2022. Suzanne, please. Uh, I understand, Gilda, you're going to show the slides, right? Um, yes, let me know yeah. when you're ready, Susan. Uh, would you like me to pull them up now for you? In just a moment, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jean-Pierre, and um, happy 2022, Rotarians. I come to you as the third masked mayor of San Marino. 
<laughs> but since I am alone today, I will take off my mask, um, but keep the reminder for all of us that we use them in public because as we all know, and I have heard a few times already, this is truly the time of COVID. Um, it's everywhere and we can't wait for it to leave. By the way, an interesting fact, um, uh, JP had mentioned that I'm the liaison to the sanitation district. Um, fascinating graphs that we see each month in our meetings. Did you know that we have a truer picture of what's going on with COVID through the sanitation districts than we do through our hospitals and clinics. Why is that? All we need to do is look at the wastewater and COVID flows through bodies. And oh you see usually a little bit higher number when you look at wastewater than you do when you look at the hospitalization numbers. Um, it's quite fascinating and quite telling. Um, I am delighted to be with you. I am beginning the fifth and final year of my service to the city of San Marino with this city council and our current composition. Um, I think you will see that we have worked on a lot. We've done a lot. Um, I feel it's been a real honor. And um, I invite you to sit back uh, since you are all not in a meeting space and um, hear about what has been going on and will be, what will be going on in the coming year. Um, if we could begin the slides, please. Thank you. Okay, next, next slide, please. Great. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about us, who the city of San Marino is, the final financial health of our city, uh, what's going on in 2021, some pretty neat things, and what we hope to accomplish in 2022, and ways that you can be involved even more than you already are, and equally important, how you can stay informed. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, as you can see from the picture, that's us, 3.7 square miles. Um, I was really fascinated when I was speaking with Director Throne. We have over 100 miles of sidewalks alone, and um, that's pretty impressive for our small little city. Uh, you can see the number of homes. Um, as you're all aware, the number of residents has dropped in the city over the last few years. And um, we have valued businesses in town. A number of them have a physical presence and others um, offer many services. We have 104 full-time employees and we are one of those most fortunate cities to have a both dedicated police and fire department. Next, please. Um, let's talk about the financial health of our city. Um, this current year, we have a $41 million budget, but you can see that's broken into two parts. And what I'd really um, like to capitalize on, and, and I'm very pleased about, um, we have a $12.5 million capital budget this year. With this city being well over 100 years old, you know that we have ongoing issues, as any city would, with keeping our sidewalks intact, our roads intact, our sewers and so forth. So that 12.5 million is a set aside for making sure all those things happen. And the 28 million is for our daily operation. Um, as you can see in 2021, we had a little bit lower expenses. Of course, part of that was due to COVID, but I am so pleased to talk about our budgeting process over the last five years, um, I, I saw our finance director, Paul Turn here today. He, in working with the outgoing mayor, Ken Udy, developed a number of incredible templates that we now use for our budgeting process. Um, they really give us a fine picture of where we are at and make sure that we include everything we need to. As you can see, we had a surplus at the end of the year ending July or June 30th. 
And um, part of what we never really know for certain, but usually end up with pretty good shape on is our property tax that comes into the city. This is a city with minimal um, sales tax. So as you know, about 70% of our budget is based on property tax. That 1.6 million surplus um, does not include, as we just uh, discussed, or I mentioned the capital improvement program or what we pay toward employees in their retirement. We have great reserves that has remained steady. Um, part of it is re uh, required by the state and part we choose to have um, for our own benefit. Next slide, please. Um, whether you are a city, a school district, or any other public entity, of course, pensions need to be taken into account. Um, I know um, in those cities who face the difficulty of bankruptcy, this is often what has caused it to happen. Uh, whether it's the public or private sector, pensions have gone up over time. And you can see we have that 35, almost $36 million in unfunded pensions. The way that occurs, there is an expected earn, a percentage rate of earning each year. And of course, it's extremely ambitious. So what the state does is subtract what we actually earn from the projected earnings, which is usually higher, and thus the increase in this case, 3.1 million. The state actually had a pretty good year last year as uh, most did with their earnings. So that was a conservative amount, the 3.1 million. OPEB liability, that means benefits after people retire. Again, mostly issues like health insurance. And that in all sectors is continuing to rise. Next slide, please. What we've accomplished, I'm very proud of this. So um, let's move on. Um, you can see our pretty new police car and um, one of two motorcycles that we are now using in the city. Uh, we have 27 sworn officers and um, we, maybe, maybe because of COVID, maybe not calls for service are down, but here's the one I'd love to emphasize. Our residential burglaries have gone down 31%. A huge factor in this uh, was when Chief Encontro first came to city council and we were having this problem with burglaries. We knew that our intelligence told us that these folks were committing these in various cities. So he requested approval, financial approval for flock cameras. And these cameras were located in a few strategic points in the city um, to help us notice the vehicles that were going through town and what was going on. Uh, this really did lead us to some of those folks. We've installed in additional ones. So I'm confident that number is going to go even lower next year. But if you look at the next figure, that's where we have our concerns, and I suspect other cities do too. Lock your vehicles. Um, too many people are too trusting, and it's a painful thing to say, but we can't leave anything in public view. Um, laptops, sunglasses, um, even stories of money being out in the open. If you can even secure your vehicle, all the better. Um, this is um, a pretty easy crime for folks to commit. And there's just a lot of folks walking through town at different times of day and night. So it's a lesson for all of us. We just need to keep our valuables out of sight. Next slide, please. Fire. Um, it goes unsaid that our firefighters and paramedics have been kept very busy. Um, I am so impressed with the calls that our paramedics have handled. Um, as you'll see in a, a, a slide coming up quite soon, like every other city, we have a significant number of folks who have experienced COVID. And in many times, in many cases that included transporting people who were very, very ill to the hospital. Um, our paramedics did it with stellar perform performance. At the same time, as you know, we had quite a few raging fires up north. 
We sent mul multiple strike teams with our fire engine 91 up there. Um, they performed exemplary service and um, they were part of a team that was able to work together. When you see the percentage of responses there in the city, um, part of that is people coming and saying, why do we go outside of the city? Um, there's a very simple answer to that. San Marino is quite small. And um, if some of you remember about four or five years ago, there was a fire on one of the streets perpendicular to Huntington Drive. And from what I observed, there were about 14 fire fighting vehicles there. That is not something we would have been able to tackle on our own. And, and of course, in doing so, you want to protect all the properties around it. So this is really mutual aid that each city offers to the other. And um, to say the least, our ambulances have been busy. So we have um, both exemplary police and fire departments. Next, please. Capital improvement, uh, there is always something going on to make our city look spiffier, brighter. And um, if I can give kudos to um, our head of public works, uh, Director Michael Throne, he always brings these in under budget and in high quality. Uh, we current have a balance of 17.8 million that we will be spending going forward. There are some examples of the things that are being done. Can you believe that? I thought it was an error. Our streets, <coughs> we last year did 35 different segments totaling over 1 million square feet of resurfacing. Um, over time, I've come to learn about street resurfacing and people ask, um, how do you choose? Well, there's a very careful study that's done every few years. And I happen to live on a street um, that's in really bad shape. It's called alligatoring and it looks exactly like that. There's big crevices between the sections of the street. We want to make those as a low priority because those are the most expensive. They have to be totally ripped out. So let's work on those streets that don't need as much. Let's get them in the queue so that going forward, they will be in good enough shape so that they will require minimal work. Uh, we talked about the sidewalks always being redone over a mile of new sidewalks this year. And like many other state, cities where you've got um, both old sewer systems and sewer systems um, that are below the line of the sewer line, you need lift stations. Um, they're expensive. We're going to be spending over $700,000 this year on those lift station improvements and probably about 7 million in the coming five, six, seven years to improve that which we never see. We will all be, also be replacing some sewage lines because they get old and they crumble if we don't get to them. So um, we've got a lot going on in public works. Next slide, please. Trees, we've got gorgeous trees in town. Um, and the way we want to keep them is by keeping an ordinance that requires very careful care of them for anyone who is a resident or has a business in town. Always check with the tree ordinance, check with the counter. Um, we have a designated um, urban forester who is available to discuss trees with you. And we just want to make sure that they are properly cared for and properly trimmed and pruned. Um, it is certainly part of what makes San Marino beautiful. Next slide, slide please. Community service highlights. Boy, talk about a program that needed to pivot and do it well. Um, we have a little corner over in Lacey Park um, as you enter from Virginia. Um, behind the building that's there for staff to use. And um, it's become a, a fun little hangout place um, during these times of COVID. This is where we have seen our uh, salute to the veterans in the city. If you haven't seen those eight foot tall, gorgeous pieces um, that have been commissioned for our numerous veterans, those are there. 
Here's a fun Halloween event. Um, we use these backdrops many times for photos. And I know Rotary participated in our first annual trunk or tree. That was awesome getting over 3000 participants. And I think the secret is out. So we'll probably plan on more visitors next year um, for trunk or treat. I'm going to pause here and ask if it would be your preference that I respond to questions now or if I should do them at the end. Could someone please cue me on that? I think at the end would be better, Susan, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Then I Thank will you. continue. Um, along with our trunk base, tr uh, trunk or tree, um, we had a lot of other celebrations in town that were done from vehicles. If, if you've driven around, you've seen the fascinating um, spring egg hunt themes, um, the Halloween themes. Um, it was really, really fun. And I know many families and many children enjoyed these events. And I've got a feeling we will unfortunately be doing more of this kind of programming for a while to come. Um, even though it's not what we want, um, it has been unique and it has been creative. So we're really proud of what our staff has done. Same thing with our library's e-sources. It doesn't matter if you live here. We have got some phenomenal offerings. You can read the New York Times through the library. You can read any of the books that you enjoy. There's many periodicals. We have bilingual English, Spanish, Mandarin. Um, and even though we are open for passport business, you'll see the little asterisk on the right there. You just need to make your appointment to do so. And um, I am always amazed at the collection that we have. Uh, our library is open with modified use, and we certainly have computers available also. Next slide, please. Um, how do we do it? I'm not going to read each of these to you. I'll let you scan them. Uh, we have award-winning, literally, employees in what they accomplish and what we do. Uh, just as a, a start, um, let's pull Chief Mario Rueda, Service Above Self. Um, we thank Rotary for honoring one of our best. We've got many best. If you see, there's 104 full-time employees. We recently had our holiday gathering uh, on a rainy day when we could still be together. And we met at the San Marino Center and we council members served the employees lunch. And I walked around the tables and spoke with employees, some of whom I really hadn't had reason to talk with. And I asked them about their satisfaction with their jobs. And I was absolutely delighted but shocked to hear how happy people are in working here. And when I asked them why, I was told things like my peer group's great fun, I have a great boss, I like the things that we're involved in. Um, every employee is so valued in the city and I'm just so proud. Uh, next slide, please. So let's talk about this coming year and what we'd like to accomplish. There's the shocker for us. It's not a shocker in many ways, but look at that steady climb with COVID. Um, Dr. Marlowe and I listen each week when the Director of Public Health, Dr. Barbara Farrar, gives her phone updates for elected officials. Um, we like the fact that she is careful and conservative. We residents of LA County live in the largest populated county in the United States. And we have been, for the most part, a pretty compliant group with regard to COVID. And I think even though these numbers have jumped up, they could have been much worse. And we all want this to be done and over. So we're really happy. Um, I, being of a certain age, received a call early on in COVID asking if I had any needs, if I needed anything delivered to me. Fortunately, I'm mobile, but um, as many of you know, 
we have a significant number of um, elderly residents in town. I know of one who is either 104 or 107 years old, um, many, many in their late 90s. And I am so impressed that with this hotline checking in on folks, uh, we do make arrangements to deliver prescriptions, um, hearing aid batteries, um, a few odds and ends of groceries. There are some residents in town who have family, but they just don't live here. So we've really been trying to reach out. And as you've already heard, we've got to go bit by bit and see how things move along. So at this time, we're really curtailing through January. I've heard from many people who say, oh no, uh, we just don't want to keep dealing with it. Um, believe me, we are all with you and we want this over as soon as possible. Next slide. Um, we, we have incurred additional expenses. Um, when employees have had to isolate, um, we have had to have other people work overtime or somehow cover their positions. And you may or may not have heard of the American Rescue Plan. Um, it, it helps us in a few different ways. It covers actual expenses. Our fire department has purchased a lot of PPEs, testing, um, and many devices um, their employees needed to have extra equipment. And um, we also have had lost income. These are the kinds of things that are covered under the American Rescue Plan. So we are fortunate that we don't have to absorb this total hit on our own. And we are thank you for, thankful for this money coming to the city. Um, go at any time to the LA County website that you see there for vaccination information. Um, there are many theories out there. We know that we are at the point where we've had the option and hopefully many of us have done it to have our vaccination, um, our second and our booster. We will not be surprised if we are asked to do that again. So, um, Stay informed and there's a site for you to do so. Next page. Um, this is part of what the city manager shared last night during our city council meeting. I won't read it to you, um, but it certainly set straight where we are right now. And in wearing my mask earlier, it's a reminder to myself and a reminder to all of us when we're around other people, because this is so easily spread, be kind and be thoughtful and keep your masks on. And um, most of our meetings, um, except for city council are virtual at this point. Um, there are mandates um, about employees. Um, if you see them, they are wearing their super masks and we want them to be safe as they continue with our vital services. Again, we will be looking at things next month. Next page. Residential neighborhoods. Um, I've received a lot of questions about this. Um, many of you may know that SB9 and SB35 passed in uh, effective January 1 of 2022. In San Marino specifically, this is an area of great concern. As you know, since, since its inception, San Marino has been a community of single family homes. Um, the, now, the law now requires that lots can be split vertically as long as you have 1,200 square feet per lot, and that is 1,200, not 12,000. Additionally, two units um, can be built on each of those structures, and um, it does not go through the traditional processes in, of San Marino, which include either the design review process or the planning commission. They are ministerially approved, which means one can go up to the counter um, and get these approved. This law is effective in most of the major cities of our state and with very, very few exceptions. SB 35 requires us to develop objective design standards 
your city council um, address those in December, and it's setting the standard of what those new division and new property structures will look like going forward. Next slide, please. Um, at the same time, um, San Marino residents um, have stated that they, uh, this is not the preference they want. They don't want the state determining local zoning. And we're hearing this from many, many other communities, regardless of, they want, of what they do want. And the city council adopted a resolution in December to support what is listed there, the Brand Huang Mendoza Tripartisan Land Use Initiative. And basically what that is um, an attempt to do is get a, an, an initiative on the ballot in November that would change um, the state requirement that these changes occur. As you know, with the um, higher density of the homes that is now um, required, there's no income tie-in to it. So it's building more housing, but it's not necessarily addressing more affordable housing. San Marino has addressed some of this in what their resolution included recently. And we've got one other major issue that many of us are concerned about. We all know that there is a water shortage. And um, aside from the impact with sewers and streets and the like, um, uh, we have been informed by the Metropolitan Water, Water District that this year we're in okay shape with our reserves, but next year we may be facing um, some rationing even inside of our homes. If you want more information on these changes, uh, there's a website at the bottom of that page for you to go to. Next page, please. Um, here's one that's very important to me, the Divi Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Task Force. Um, we need to come together more fully as a community. We need to appreciate and enjoy one another. Um, it is no secret that there have been incidents in town where there has not been kindness displayed. Some of this has increased during the time of COVID, people laying blame. Um, I ran on the campaign theme, we are one San Marino. And I believe it now more than ever before. And as a result, we are looking for interested individuals to make a short term commitment, uh, business, residents, if you have an interest in seeing um, a more inclusive, more communicative community, please consider joining this short-term work group. We have got a great facilitator who's going to be leading us through that process. And um, Vice Mayor Talt and I will be facilitating this group. Please consider um, applying to be part of this and giving your vision and your voice to what we might look like going forward. Next slide. Um, the alternative mobile crisis response team, you saw those COVID numbers earlier. They have taken a toll on us as a society. We see it with young people, we see it with teens, we see it with adults. It is increasing thoughts of suicide, it's increasing substance abuse. We're seeing more domestic violence. We're seeing more child abuse and nobody is to blame. This is the result of being isolated from healthy environments. And the Board of Supervisors directed the Department of Mental Health to develop an outreach program to try to address this issue. Um, through Dr. Marlowe and um, the San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments, which I am a liaison to, we are excited to be working in a partnership with South Pasadena and Arcadia to assist for our residents of all age resources to help them get through these times. This would not involve the police and it would be done through a mobile van in a private setting where there would be a, um, a licensed clinician making an assessment to see 
how that person can be helped. Is there an immediate need? And more important, is there a follow-up need? And how can we educate the surrounding family and provide more resources? More to follow as we hear the details and get an RFP put together. Next slide. So what can you do and what's available to you? Next slide, please. Uh, I mentioned the task force. Um, we also are due to develop a general plan for our city. Uh, this is our guiding document. This is what sets forth what we want to look like in the coming years. Um, it is due to be done. Uh, we are looking for thinkers, people who are visionaries and people who want to talk about what they'd like to see in the city in the future. We are encouraging and welcoming people to apply for this. We always have commissions and board opportunities. And over on the right side there, um, we are always hearing from genuinely concerned uh, citizens and people who work in the community about things that just don't look right. I know sometimes when I go out on my morning walk, there may be sprinklers that have been broken. Um, here's a way to report anything you might see. Code violations, no one wants to be woken up on a Sunday morning with chainsaws. That's not in line with our operating hours. So you can go to the city website and report anything that you'd like to see a follow-up on and it will get done. We keep track of all of those. And it's an important part that we, a way that we can all contribute. Next. On the right, I consider that to be one of the most valuable tools if, and it is my goal as mayor to increase subscriptions by 10% during this coming year. Every Thursday, the city manager has a weekly update. It includes, of course, unfortunately, everything we need to know about COVID at the moment, um, what we should, shouldn't be doing and so forth. And it gives an update of many of our departments. It gives an update of what's available to you as a consumer, things you can be involved in, things you can pick up and grab, things you can participate in in Lacey Park. Um, it really is a compendium of everything that's going on, programs available online. I encourage everyone to sign up for it. And you see there the um, website where you can do that. Um, again, I can't stress how important this is. It's really everything you need to know about San Marino. Next page, please. Um, new laws. I've been getting a lot of questions about SB 1383. That has to do with our organic waste. And um, for those of you who receive services from Athens, you either have recently received a bill or you will be receiving a bill with an update in it. Um, we are now required to um, take all of our organic waste and add it to, for San Marino only, because I know there's different programs in different cities, but um, since many of us do have green waste from our lawn clippings, please have a little collection bin in your kitchen and put everything in there that would be considered organic. Banana peels, um, bread that you may have in your fridge. Interestingly, even cardboard boxes from food, coffee grounds. Um, there, there is um, a large number of items that you can put in there and just put that out with your greens. And that is now state law in time, there will be actual checking to see if those things are being properly um, put into the recycling. And I'd also like to comment um, about Athens services. People have said, San Marino a few years ago, eliminated separate bins for our recycling, our cans, our bottles and the like. And they said, come on, nobody's really separating all that stuff by hand. And I can attest, having made a visit to one of the Athens recycling centers, it truly does 
occur. There are systems of conveyor belts um, where plastics are plucked, glass is pulled out, wood. Um, I've seen bicycles, tricycles, things that are being pulled off this line. And there is a huge drop off where the trucks leave all the organic waste, most of which is lawn clippings, of course. There's another section for large bulky items, mattresses and the like. Um, and I, um, in speaking with Director Throne, we are told that when it is safe, Athens will again be offering this visit. I can't encourage you enough if you receive services through Athens to go and take this visit. It will just leave you awestruck. Uh, new state law requires that we don't put on our sprinklers if it has rained within 48 hours. Um, the reason for this is obvious and we can all do our part, but it is now the law. Next slide, please. And we have made an, uh, a year's multi-year effort to have San Marino's wonderful businesses enjoy greater patronizing. Um, we started a campaign and um, right there are two of your shop local bingo winners. Um, they only needed to complete a bingo on a card and instead they visited every single business in town that participated and you see Jean Wilhite and Lindsay Lytle with their prizes there in front of City Hall. Um, we know how tough it is today to have a storefront business. We ask everyone to patronize San Marino businesses, um, as I know you do whenever we have city council um, meetings that require meals, we always purchase in town and any of our special gifts we purchase here also. So we know that we've got many great business owners and many businesses in town that we want to support. Thank you. Next slide. And that covers it for my area, um, but I am ready to answer any question. And if I cannot, there is a great backup team here with me today. Could I start? Uh, first off, uh, Susan, that was a really a good presentation and very thorough. You did a great job. Thank you, Devin. Uh, um, second time I've seen it, I'll probably see it again. Um, it will have four showings. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's good. We can't, Getting the word out is terrific. Um, Thank you. One of the things I'd like to do is invite you to be a member of the Rotary Club. We have three uh, members in the Rotary Club that are uh, on, your, on the city staff. We have two people on the council who are members of the thing. And traditionally, we've always welcomed the mayor. And uh, so that is at least my personal invitation to you to join the Rotary Club. Rotary Club is doing all it can to help the city. Come on and help us. <laughs> Well, and, and I thank you, Dennis, and um, I am absolutely acknowledging all that Rotary is and has been. You have a really long tradition in our city, and I was quick to point out that you acknowledge the best of our best, and we really appreciate that, and your involvement with the Motor Classic is incredible. So let why don't you and I talk later, okay? Uh, that'd be great. Okay, a, a couple of thank questions. You. I don't want to manipulate. You mentioned a, a 12.5 uh, uh, million in the uh, capital budget. Does that include, and what would the amount be for redoing the San Marino Center and where does that stand and when do you expect to have it started? Um, I am going to let Dr. Marlowe give the update for the specific reason she can encapsulate it more quickly than I can. We addressed this last night during our city council meeting, and then any piece that um, Director Chung needs to add to it, I will defer to him. Um, Dr. Marlowe? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, an excellent question. This is a project that is near and dear to our heart, which is good because we've been working on it for quite some time. And I know that the city has been working on it even long before I was working on it. So uh, the project is moving forward. Uh, part of what is taking the long time right now is the CEQA process, which is a process where we've elected to do what's called a focused 
EIR, which is an environmental impact report that basically assesses the project and tries to determine if there are any negative impacts to the environment and what steps we might take to mitigate those impacts. Uh, the mayor is correct. Last night we did take a small step forward. Um, yes. The EIR process is underway and has identified uh, some areas that need some further study. One of the things that did come out in the initial study is it looks like switching the facade to a Spanish style, which is what we had been hoping to do, will create some unfortunate impacts. And so although there was no official vote last night, based on what I heard in the meeting, and you can hear it too, if you wanna spend some time watching the meeting on Zoom, it is recorded. Uh, it looks like the council is supportive of mitigating that impact. And what that means is that the facade would stay as it is now, which apparently I'm no architect, but apparently it is called modern colonial revival is the style of the current San Marino Center. That's what I'm told, I gotta go with the experts. Uh, so um, it appears that the project uh, should move forward with that style. Um, last night, to make that happen, the council did direct staff to retain our architect to redraw the plans so that instead of being Spanish revival on the outside, they would be modern colonial revival on the outside. So we will be back in front of the council in just a couple of weeks with that contract amendment to get those plans redrawn. Uh, if everything proceeds as it looks like it is proceeding now, and if the council continues to be supportive of the project, and if the council supports the modern colonial revival design of the project, then I will not bore you with all of the details, but we are hoping to get to a point where we can break ground roughly September 1st. So it is exciting to finally have a potential date on the horizon, although there are a few check boxes that will need to be met before then. The first part of your question was about funding. Um, the project is obviously changing now. We are returning back to its current facade design. So mm -hmm. it's unclear exactly how much the program, uh, the project will cost. I think our most recent estimation was somewhere in the neighborhood of five okay. or $6 million. And that includes all of the frankly incredible um, adjustments that the San Marino Center Task Force has recommended, which is a group of your peers who are, I cannot say enough good things about them, who have been working for over a year to try to design an incredible community center for this community. And I think they've done a wonderful job uh, we'll have a final sense of what the cost is going to be later. And of course, we will have a real sense of what the project is going to be when we go out to bid and actually get bids for it. And that's when we'll really know. Until then, everything else is just our best guess and uh, the architect's best guess. Uh, the final piece of your question, I'm not sure, by the way, that, that the mayor was correct that I could encapsulate this faster because this seems to be taking a long time. Uh, but the final piece is uh, the money has not been appropriated yet for the expense expenditure of construction that would likely need to happen in this year's budget process. So for the 2020, 2022-23 budget, we do have the money in our capital reserves to fund this project should the council elect to do so, and it would come out of those capital reserves. I think I answered everything, not <coughs> encapsulated in any way, shape, or form, but uh, Mayor, I turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Another a quick question, and I don't want to monopolize it. You talked about the trunk or treat thing, which was a terrific uh, event. Uh, what a um, guest. Yeah, it, but you know, the, the city was prepared for maybe five or 600 people, and there were, like you said, maybe two or 3,000. And, and you also commented the cat's out of the bag on this thing. This could just multiply by a factor of two or three next, next time. And, I think the city number one needs to be, but what I'm wondering is we used to charge, you know, like the, the Easter egg hunt or some of these other things, a small amount, and especially for out of, out of uh, town uh, folks to attend, it was always reasonable, but it helped maybe control the crowds maybe, but it also helped to face some of the, the expenses. And I was wondering if you've given any thought to having a fee for next year's uh, trunk or treat. Dennis, you're talking just like a council member. Um, <laughs> I got thrown off the council. 
um, we, we've already talked about some type of control um, because yes, this has the potential of just being enormous. And we envision something not unlike the 4th of July because the scope of it will be so large. Um, we will certainly need better lighting. We will need um, a, a, a lot of intentional setup. So it was a pleasant surprise, but going forward, you are spot on. It will require a lot more planning, but um, what that will look like, um, that will come from our community services department with input from public safety. But thank you, Dennis. Well, thank you. It looks like you're, you're addressing it. One more quick question. You talked a lot about COVID and, uh, um, and I've appeared before the council a couple of times uh, saying that uh, this idea of the, the police only not quite 50% of them being vaccinated. I'd like to know the status of that and what we're going to do and whether we're going to, if, if they're not vaccinated, are we, are they going to be out of the employment of the city? What's the story? I, I just think this is bad news. Um, since we are in process on that issue right now, I'm again going to defer to Dr. Marlowe because she will have the specific language we need to use to, to share with you. And it's not being evasive, it's just that with the legal process. Dr. Marlowe? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I think I will be a little bit quicker on this one because I've been asked this question a lot. I'm practiced. Uh, we are currently in the meet and confer process with our Police Officers Association. Uh, and as most of the community knows from Mitch's excellent articles in the Tribune, we are currently at the impasse stage of that process, which means that the association and the city were unable to come to an agreement. There are two steps that the Police Officers Association uh, elected to engage in. The first was arbitration and the second is fact finding. Both are available to them should they wish to use it and they have elected to use both. We have now completed the arbitration process and that is an advisory arbitration, which is to say that the opinion is advisory on the council. They are not bound by it should they not want to be bound by it. As it turns out, uh, at last night's council meeting, the city council did adopt the arbitrator's report. We finished that process. We got the report and the arbitrator did support the city's position, which is that the city does indeed have a right to institute this vaccine mandate should we choose to. So the council adopted that. Um, that was great news for our policy and we appreciate the support, but it's kind of a non-issue in the event timeline because we still are going to fact finding with the police officers association that report too is advisory on the council the council will have the ability to accept it reject it or modify it once it's done that process is slated for mid-february and we would expect to be in front of the council with a final decision probably either at their march 9th meeting or their march 25th meeting thank you Thank you. Any other question? We have a few more minutes for questions. <clears throat> uh, yes, Susan. Yes. Uh, this is Isaac. Uh, congratulations Thanks, Isaac. first. Um, Thank you. I know that uh, the presentation is awesome. And just uh, plugged in, we will have City Club's uh, uh, meeting next week, uh, next Tuesday night. And we're looking forward for a uh, similar presentation. Um, and I think that is helpful to the citizens uh, in the community. Uh, and thank you for sharing, and Dr. Malo is also sharing the status of the San Marino Center, which is uh, very relevant to City Club. Uh, just by, uh, by the way that this year I am the president of the City Club, so I will be more involved with the, uh, all the activities. Um, in the meantime, um, we also have City Talk, which is an additional online um, interchange with our communities. That's going to happen tonight at 7 o'clock, and that is another vehicle to communicate with the city. And we will feature um, Paul Chan, Chang uh, to talk a little more detail on the uh, city budget. So any of you that are interested in signing up, you can go to sanmarinocityclub.org, um, sign up for the uh, city talk, uh, as well as the next week's uh, meeting that can be signed up on the website also. Uh, with that, I'd like to um, add about your last, uh, your last presentation about this, the uh, business 
uh, supporting our local business. Do you have any update on the wayfinding sign and how how is it going right now? Thank you for that question. And, and thank you for your current presidency. Um, I feel the pain, disappointment, discomfort of both Rotary and City Club and not being able to be, meet live. And I thank you for your patience in these Zoom times. Um, as you probably know, um, those of you who've been involved for quite a while, our um, community development director who had been with us for a long time, Aldo Cervantes, has left us and he's right next door in San Gabriel with extended responsibilities in his new job. And we will be having a new director coming on board momentarily. And I think, I, um, Isaac, we will be picking up that issue at that point, along with more work on our economic development. We had a work group of which Isaac had, has been a member that has been sort of dormant during this transition period. And hopefully we can get some updates on that. I do believe though, Isaac, that um, some of the names for the sections of town that were being proposed and they were run by the Public Safety Commission um, made people say where? So I think we need to rework what we're calling the different districts in town. And that would be something that we would absolutely love way in from Rotary so that when people are driving, they can identify, oh, yes, that name of that district makes sense. Um, but we do want those markers around town. Thank you for that question. Um, I just have a, a very brief couple of comments and questions. Uh, Susan, thank you so much for that and for all of your service. Susan and oh, I you. have worked together since we first began being involved in the community, which uh, I think is at least seven or eight years ago. Uh, I think quite a bit longer, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> And also, I want to compliment Susan because she is such a hands-on and feet-on, if I may, mayor. I mean, if there is a problem or an issue in town, she will almost certainly have seen it and walked to it and experienced it firsthand. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, I also want to just reiterate the importance for all of us of SB9 and SB35 and what is going to happen on that. And I want to be and plan to be involved in putting it on the ballot. I mean, there are problems even with one key state legislator I've talked to as a friend of mine, and it's... Uh, um, even people to whom you think would be opposed are not necessarily opposed in Sacramento. And it's a very dangerous precedent. It's a real case of be careful what they wish for because once Sacramento starts determining local zoning, um, you know, Katie bar the door. Finally, um, kind of a rhetorical question really, which is, I won't even phrase it as a question, but I know that you're doing this, but make sure that as good as our capital budget situation is, make sure you're looking at every opportunity to get money out of the bills that may be passed in Washington or have been passed. Uh, uh, there's a lot of money out there, despite what's happening to the BBB plan now. And, uh, and then finally, just a, a real specific question on the increase, the one category in which crime is increased, larceny, and I guess particularly in cars, to what extent are those forced entries, smash and grab type situations, as opposed to people just opening the doors and taking what's inside? That's a really good question, Chris. And first off, thanks for your other comments. Um, and I will um, separate, I have to be very careful, um, as you would well know, as a political person making a statement about um, uh, 
bills or laws that have been enacted versus the personal Susan and what I feel about going forward. So I appreciate you sharing your thoughts. With that, I'm going to turn that over to Chief Encontro to answer that question. Thank you very much, Mayor. And um, the answer to the question is it's slightly more of the cars are left unlocked. And uh, larceny is also do include uh, problems we've had with theft of uh, garden equipment and also package theft. The, um, those larcenies for the most part are uh, very preventable. Uh, please uh, use other means to have packages left other than on your front step. Uh, whether you use a mailbox, whether you use a neighbor's house, have them delivered at home or someone, someplace where there's someone there. Um, regarding gardening equipment, uh, help out your gardeners and have them allow them to park on your driveway or somewhere off street. And then finally with uh, vehicles, take things out of your car, put them in your trunk if you're able to. If not, take them with you and uh, please lock your cars at night or even jumping out of the car real quick to pick up some food or uh, picking up an item, a cleaning or something like that. All it takes is uh, a few seconds and uh, someone will be watching you and they walk up, take whatever's in your car and off they go. Uh, those are very preventable uh, crimes. And uh, when we uh, don't do those simple things, we just invite uh, more crime to occur. But uh, we put out messaging and we really do appreciate you working with us and uh, look forward to working on that problem in the future. Thank you, Chief. And I'd like to echo one point of that. Um, when I'm doing my morning walks and I see gardeners with all of their equipment out in the straight street, I will even ask them if they can pop possibly park on the owner's property. And sometimes uh, the folks have said to me, well, I have a truck that leaks oil. Bring your big piece of cardboard and ask the owner if you can put that underneath your vehicle. Um, on a personal note, I don't know, um, I, well, I wasn't named by name, but about six years ago, I was driving on the streets of San Marino and um, some bad guys had just held up um, a gardener with a weapon and taken some items and fled. And they hit my car at a high rate of speed with the truck they had rented. They went over my car, their wheel broke off and they came out running with guns. We don't want any of our gardeners or any innocent bystanders to be the victims of that. So I can't echo chief enough. If there's any way, no matter where you live, if you have a gardener that you can get them off the street, it would behoove everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. We have time for one last question before we bring this meeting to a close. Dennis, you've been asking well, questions. I've already. asked enough questions, but I'll ask this one real quick. Where do we stand on the housing element and how is that going to affect San Marino in the future? Now you've taken us beyond our time, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, then don't answer it. We, we submitted our housing element and it's with HDC and apparently the rules may be shifting at the moment. We're waiting to hear more. Um, as you know, San Marino, and this is true for so many other communities, is required to have 397 new units during the next cycle. We're not sure exactly where those are all going, but we have already been told that we are speeding, we are going to be required to speed up the zoning changes on that. What's being sent back to us, Dennis, is almost impossible for us to do. So we are checking with other cities. We have a wonderful city attorney who is hard at work at that. And as soon as we get an update, we will share more. But yes, all cities are feeling the pinch right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you. I want to extend to you a warm thank you for this wonderful presentation and very informative. So thank you again. Uh, we are going to bring that meeting to a close, but uh, for those of you who are interested in the international committee meeting, please stay on the on this link or go to the link provided by Stephanie and we'll start at 1.30. Next week, we'll uh, meet again on Zoom to hear from the president of the San Marino School Board, Nam Jack. And uh, thank you to you, Rob Feidler, and the program committee for making that possible. On this, I'm going to uh, 
adjourn this meeting. Thank you very much. I wish you an excellent day. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye now. <coughs> Thank you. Bye. -bye. I thought we were meeting on this Zoom for international. I guess not, huh? We are, we are but oh. I'm, not, I'm not sure who all the members are. So I'm gonna stop recording. Okay. <laughs>